Good morning. Uh, this week you're reading about cognitive development in infants and toddlers. The field of cognitive psychology is a very large and interesting part of psychology in general. It covers both the processes and functions and uses of various kinds of mental ways of understanding and interacting with the world. Specifically, I mean it covers such areas as thinking, uh, memory, attention and attention span, uh, and uh, language. These are all processes that take place in the brain and in the mind that cannot be observed directly. Uh, it says something about human nature that we take these cognitive processes that we have so much for granted that we really don't reflect on how remarkable they are. Uh, as you read about child development throughout this course, I hope you will get a sense of how wondrous, uh, both quantitatively and qualitatively, the uh, development of these cognitive processes is. For example, just quickly, infants are born making sounds, but they certainly cannot speak. Uh, and if you look at infants uh, through the first year, they go through a series of stages by which they become able to incorporate sounds into their everyday patterns and eventually words emerge. Now this process takes about a year before you see first words and it's preceded by such pre-linguistic activities as cooing, making of open mouth sounds like ah, ah and uh, babbling which involves the combining of closed and open mouth sounds, consonants and vowels, we might call them. Ba, 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 ba would be an example. Towards the end of the first year, beginning of the second year, infants begin to make words. And their first words are usually very simple. They are mostly naming words. That is, they refer to objects around them in their world. Uh, but they are true words. They stand for and represent things that they see and interact with in their everyday life. Uh, many times uh, uh, these first words will uh, eventually turn into more clearly understandable vocabulary uh, by age two, two and a half, or three. But particularly in the second year, the first words that children say are often understood by their parents, but not by others around them. So first words at about a year. By the time a child is two, they may have a vocabulary of 200, 300 words, tops. By the time that child is three, they may have a vocabulary of 1,000 to 1,500 words. By the time that same child is six, they may have a vocabulary of five to 10,000 words. Uh, it's such an incredible outburst of uh, language that leads us, by the time we are ready for school, as we say, fluent speakers in our language. Not only is the quantitative size of a child's vocabulary changing rapidly, uh, increasing, as we'll see, by several words a day in the toddler and preschool period, but also the uses of language are changing. Uh, children's speech becomes more grammatical. They put words together. They form simple sentences. And if you look at children, say, uh, 12 months to 18 months old, uh, they speak uh, in what psychologists call holophrases, uh, single words that have extended meanings. A word like up, meaning pick me up, or more, meaning I'd like more, would be examples. In the second half of the second year, children's speech becomes what psychologists call telegraphic. That is, it begins to include nouns and verbs and uh, subjects and predicates, but it leaves out unnecessary words. The child who at 18 months may say up may at 20 months or 24 months say up me, and in that way is adding words to their grammatical forms. By the time a child is uh, two and a half to three, their language is already incorporating adjectives like colors or size, as well as some of the prepositions and articles that are the filler words in our speech. And again, 
by the time a child is in preschool, the length of their average sentences and the complexity of the kinds of words they use already is producing understandable speech to adults. Uh, we are no longer speaking baby talk to young children as we do in the first year. But by the time they're three and four, we're talking as we would to another person. Well, that's just one example about how rapidly a cognitive skill changes. But today what I want to talk a little bit about with you is the work of Piaget. Jean Piaget was a Swiss psychologist who really brought back into focus not just the study of cognition generally, but specifically the ways in which the ability of children to look at and understand and make sense of their world changes over time. You'll notice in your text that your author spends almost as much time giving you examples of research critical of Piaget's theory as she does presenting Piaget's theory. Uh, that's a good thing. I mean, uh, theories are meant to be tested and altered. And in fact, if I had to summarize right now, what I'd say is that many of the lines of research today uh, suggest that infants and toddlers are even more cognitively advanced. That is, they attain certain skills uh, that Piaget hypothesized that they would at even an earlier age than he does. And I thought this morning I would give you one example. The hallmark of uh, Piaget's first stage of uh, cognitive growth, what he called the sensory motor stage, was the development of the ability to use and manipulate symbols. Now, what is a symbol? Well, a symbol is something that stands for or represents something else. And again, the most obvious examples to you and me as adults would be words. Uh, but there are many other kinds of symbols. Uh, mathematical symbols would be perhaps another obvious example, where we represent numbers by different uh, forms. Uh, you know, five by the number five, for example. We even represent uh, what are called operations uh, by symbols. So if I make an x between two numbers, you know I mean multiply those two numbers. There are other kinds of symbols as well. Uh, infants, for example, from a very uh, early age, that is, as early as one to two months, begin to show some of the uh, physical symbols that are part of human communication. They smile, for example. They uh, stare at you. They raise their eyebrows. By the end of the first year, they'll know how to say bye-bye by waving. Uh, or as one of my uh, friends uh, uh, taught his uh, daughter before she was one year of age, uh, they're able to give you a high five when your favorite football team scores a touchdown. So children very rapidly begin to use symbols. That is, they use gestures, language, other kinds of signs to communicate meaning to us. And those symbols are in their mental world. That is, they are, they are references that have meaning, which they can then express and communicate to others through. Piaget gave several basic examples of the kinds of symbols attained in the sensory motor period, the most important one being what he called object permanence. That's the assumption that an object exists even when you are not able to see it or hear it or interact with it directly what you and I would call thinking. Uh, other examples would be um, object play. You know, when a toddler uh, picks up a block and goes vroom, 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 they're really using that block as a car. And so the block is a symbol of something else. Uh, and another example would be what Piaget uh, referred to as deferred imitation. Now, you all know imitation is when you do something that you're looking at and you repeat it. But deferred imitation means observing something at one time and then retaining that in your memory and doing it again at another point in time without some external cue to do it. Uh, as children retain symbols for events, they're able to go back at a later point in time and engage in something in a similar way to how they did it before. Now, Piaget himself was not that interested in memory or uh, language or even attention. Uh, but what he was interested in was how children make sense of their worlds and come to uh, develop the uh, symbol-making abilities that they have. 
Well, I'll let you read about this in your text, but I want to quickly point out before I end today uh, examples of how Piaget saw this process emerging. First of all, he saw the sensory motor period as being broken down into several substages uh, listed in your text, for example, beginning first with reflexes and gradually over periods of a few months developing both greater complexity and greater flexibility. So for example, if you were looking at a, say, two to three month old child in what Piaget would have called the primary circular reaction stage, that child would engage in an action, say kicking his feet, and inadvertently or unintentionally that action would have caused something interesting to happen, like a mobile moving above his head. And having done that by chance, he would then repeat that action in the same way to produce the same effect. If you looked at that same child, say at about 12, 14 months of age, that child would be dropping things off of his high chair on purpose to hear the sound and to see the effect that it made on the floor. Uh, I remember as a parent uh, having a, what we used to call a splat mat on the floor because trying to keep a child from dropping things off his high chair uh, was an impossibility. And they never seemed to tire of this playful game. At a deeper level than it just being fun and messy, Piaget would say that child is experimenting with variations of behavior to produce different desired effects. They're already showing early signs of thinking. They're not simply unintentionally creating an effect which they repeat. Rather, they are purposefully and intentionally creating effects and then varying those effects to see, what if I drop it this way? What if I spill this instead of throw that? Uh, they're little experimenters. Uh, try to keep that in mind as you uh, clean up after your own infants and toddlers. Um, it's not as easy as it sounds. Piaget was rather conservative in his timetable. And as I said earlier, though Piaget suggested that this gradual process of attaining object permanence uh, and manipulation of symbols and true thought emerged gradually over the first 18 months to two years, other more recent researchers have suggested that children are coming to conclusions about the world, testing their expectations, uh, and doing these things at a much earlier age, as young as between six months and 12 months of age. Well, I'll leave that to the cognitive researchers to sort out. Um, I never um, uh, underestimate the marvelous abilities of even babies and toddlers when it comes to cognitive growth. But the point I want to make here is that Piaget really brought alive this subject of what's going on in the minds of young people, infants, toddlers, young children. How do they construct their world so that they can make sense of it? Whether the sense they make is right or wrong by adult standards. How are they understanding things? And he gave us a vocabulary which frankly uh, is sometimes off-putting to uh, English speakers like us, but a vocabulary of words like adaptation, organization, schemes, operations, assimilation, accommodation, that were his attempt to um, linguistically be very precise about what he was talking about. Uh, I encourage you to learn that vocabulary as you're reading about the century motor period, and we'll return to it later in this course as we look at preschoolers and school age kids and even adolescents as they go through their kinds of cognitive growth and change as well. Good luck with your readings for this week.